Okay, so for this next section, we're going to focus on using the scatter plots as well as um, creating lines of best fit for predictions. And what we're going to get into is one of the most commonly used um, methodologies for looking at data that people collect um, and all kinds of research and for publishing reports and so forth. So we've got this nice scatter plot here. You can see a pretty strong uh, relationship. If we were to do a correlation test, you'd see a strong correlation between life expectancy in U.S. counties in 2014 and household income. So we're going to play around with this data a little bit and introduce you to some uh, very commonly used commands um, that you might be able to use for your own uh, research and your own uh, data. So if you were looking at the uh, online uh, PDF textbook, the Larry Winter textbook, a lot we're going to be dealing with in this section here is correlation, linear regression, and maybe a little logistic regression later on. But in this first video here on scatter plots and regression, um, you've already seen some videos on correlations, um, but we're going to focus on uh, this section. All right, so linear regression and the scatter plot. So you remember from the previous videos on Pearson and Spearman correlation or normality test, right? So when you have that type of data, you need the data to be in columns. And we can work with two or more columns of continuous data for doing um, linear regression, and we need two columns of data for doing like scatter plots. Now, some folks will also use this approach not with continuous data, but maybe ordinal outcome data. And some statisticians would tell you to proceed cautiously or have some other options for how to do that. But you may see people who um, collect data like uh, pain data on a Likert scale that may go from uh, 1 to 10 or, or uh, 1 to 100. How much does it hurt with 100 being excruciating and 1 being uh, it doesn't bother me at all? Um, that's not a continuous measure. It's a it's a, a measure where maybe people point at a, per, a particular uh, picture and and then those rankings are given. Or um, people are asked uh, agree or strongly uh, disagree, and they may have strongly agree be coded as five and strongly disagree be coded as one or zero. Um, and they may plot responses with that ordinal outcome like it is continuous data. So you will see that happen. Now using scatter plots for binary data or dichotomous data like health outcome data like yes or no doesn't particularly uh, look good and uh, we use logistic regression for that and uh, we can uh, look at that in the future. So the scatter plot. Say you want to make this picture pretty easy to do. The uh, last, uh, I did, we had the one assignment and the last assignment had you do a scatter plot. Um, so if you try to do a scatter plot with a binary variable like household income and it's coded as uh, non-Kentucky U.S. counties and Kentucky U.S. counties or if this was a health data, yes or, or in case of zero, zero being no, one being yes. So you can see we get all the counties here and all the counties for non-Kentucky here. Not exactly a pretty image. You can still extrapolate a little bit of information from this, but not a whole lot. So the scatter plot using it better. Um, usually we want to have continuous data as an X and a Y variable. This is one of the visually easiest way of exploring your data set looking for relationships between two variables. Um, you can look for patterns or look for the absence of patterns. The command is super easy in Stata. It's just scatter and then you put your first variable and then your second variable. Usually this is your Y and then this is your X variable. Y axis, X axis. So again variable one is usually your outcome variable. Variable two would be maybe your predictor. All right, so you want to make this graph where life expectancy is on your y-axis, household income is on the x-axis. 
here's the command scatter if your variable was named life expect 14 and your household income data are continuous and that's your predictor there you go scatter life expect 14 household income hit enter and then it will produce that graph maybe you're interested in adding a line of best fit with some fitted values a line of best fit to show this relationship to show the line of best fit how do you do that well it's very easy we're going to start off with that same scatter command that we already had right so super easy command we start off with our scatter command but then we're going to insert these two vertical lines now on my keyboard um, on my laptop here um, you have to like hit the shift key and then the uh, backslash button on this Mac to get these vertical lines so you need these two vertical lines for this to work so it's just scatter variable one variable two whatever those are called so scatter life expect 14 household income then these two vertical lines so scatter space var one space var two space vertical line vertical line space and then I type in L fit var1 var2 I suspect this stands for linear fit these should be in the same order if you want these to produce the line of best fit for these so when you do that command with var1 being your outcome and both these being first and then var2 being your predictors you will get a line of best fit that looks just like that so that's how you add a line of best fit there visually is the command it, it covers two lines of text um, but that that is the command when you hit enter you will get that type of figure very easy to do now you may be interested in knowing what the equation of this line is because maybe you've got um, you know missing data or you want to know if we raise the income in this county from 60,000 to 80,000 what will this be now you can visually estimate that a county in the United States at 60,000 has a life expectancy of about 77 and a county with 80,000 in income has a life expectancy of 82 this line of best fit says a county with hundred and twenty thousand dollars of income per year has a life expectancy of about 87 according to the life expectancy figures there's only a few counties in the United States that have these really high high incomes and you can see that that these two really rich counties fall below the line so maybe the line has more of a flatter shape but this is a linear fit line if you want to know the equation of that line uh, how do we do that so you should remember the equation of a line is y equals mx plus b our outcome variable equals the slope of in this case our coefficient times x plus b b is our y-intercept where this line would cross the uh, y-axis in uh, stats we'll call that a constant so I'll explain that here more in a second so the equation of the line you want the equation of the line remember y equals mx plus b y is what you're trying to figure out it's what you're solving for m is the slope of the line x is the value of whatever variable you place on the x-axis using the same units of whatever is on the x-axis b is the y-intercept so y equals mx plus b the y-intercept is where that line crosses the y-axis so in order to get the equation of the line um, in like excel you have to type all this equals line s and it's, real, it's a little more challenging in stata it's super easy so you just type in this command regress life expect 14 that's our y variable and and then our x variable remember scatter life expect household income now it's regress life expect 14 household income and when you do that you get this output using that command so here's the output we get we get all this stuff okay we'll talk about this you'll be able to understand what the majority of this means here um, in this video and then in the following video so stata gives us everything we need for that line here's our 
outcome variable right here. Life expect 14. This is our, our y. If we want to figure out y, y equals m, so 0 0.0001249. That's the slope of that line. m, x is whatever we plug in for household income, plus b. This constant term, 71.68, that's our y intercept. You can go back and we can look. 71.68 is where Stata thinks that that line of best fit would cross zero. So this only goes out to 20,000. If we go all the way out to where zero is, it would cross right about 71.68. So this does not have the full scale to go to zero. It only goes to, it figured out where does the lowest income in the United States look like it's at for accounting. So where 0 and the y are at, if x were 0, it would be 71.68. So, so we've got the equation of this line, y equals mx plus b. Um, so if we plug any value into x, we can estimate what that county's life expectancy would be using this formula, y equals mx plus b. So life expectancy equals 0.0001249x plus the y-intercept, or our constant term. x is any household income value we want to plug in there. So if we want to know the life expectancy for a community that has $45,000 per year, that's the county's income, you know, the typical income, then y equals mx plus b says to do the following. 0.000 times 45,000 plus 71.68, and that gives us 77.30 years is what we'd expect the life expectancy to be for that community. You can use state as a calculator if you ever want to by using the display command and display and then enter your formula. If you use a comma, you'll get this error, so commas are not allowed. But display, type in your command, use the uh, Shift-8 key to create this asterisk. That's your multiplication symbol. So this is Y equals, here's M, here's X, plus B, and that gives us the 77.3. Maybe you said, you know, well, what if we have a county that makes 300,000? We had nothing on the graph that was that high. Remember, the highest counties were like 120,000. But if we had a uh, median household income of 300,000 be plugged in for a county, what would that be? So y equals 0 0.0001249, that's m, times x, 300,000, plus b. And that gets... 109 years of age would be that county's life expectancy if that's the median income. So I don't know. That's a social experiment that would have to be solved in the future. I don't know if that's possible or not. You know, we're relying on that line of best fit. That line of best fit assumes a linear relationship, not some flattening. So if the line should flatten, we might be interested in it. In addition, and we're going to cover this more here into the future. We get this other information. We get p-values for household income. We see that household income is statistically associated with life expectancy. That's what that p-value is telling us, that it's an important term in our equation, our line equation, so it's statistically significant. We also get all this other information that we'll discuss here in a second. So this number, this box here, we're going to have it right here. We're going to talk about this more in the next video but it tells us the number of observations. It tells us the equation of our line is statistically better um, than, than not having it at all. So just kind of like maybe guess life expectancy at the average of the United States. Having that information about household income is important and it adds value. It's statistically better than not knowing the income if you're trying to guess life expectancy. We have this R squared value and then this adjusted R squared value. Um, I'll talk more about the difference between these, but in general, just a quick, easy way of saying this, the R-square says that 42% of the variability in life expectancy, the outcome, is explained by our model. So um, we're going to 
continue this in our next video.